The Pentagon is pumping huge sums of money into Africa in the hope its troops, weapons and mercenaries will turn a land of conflict into a land of hope. As you can see here, American military bases are spread all across the continent. The biggest outpost for the U.S. on the Horn of Africa is in Djibouti, which now hosts more than 4,000 military personnel and contractors. Also, thousands of U.S. soldiers are reportedly preparing for missions as part of the Pentagon's new strategy to train and advise regional forces. RT's Paula Sleer investigates what could be behind Washington's military boost. Hundreds of millions of American dollars are flowing into Africa as the Pentagon ups its spending on the continent. There's plenty of raw materials here, Nigeria a case in point. The West African nation is America's fourth largest supplier of crude oil, accounting for 11 percent of all U.S. oil imports. The American government has a lot of investment in Nigeria. They have uh, invested so much in the oil and gas sector and they need to protect that. And that, believes Raf Sanjani, is the real reason for U.S. troop expansion in Africa. Not to bring democracy, not to help the local populations, but to protect American interests and justify their reasons for being here. The poor governance in Nigeria, which led to you know, the collapse of uh, um, you know, accountability, transparency, and of course you know, the violence, the uh, different socio-economic and political crisis in the country, has now provided you know, a legitimate, in terms of American foreign policy, uh, reasons to actually come into Nigeria. Africa is dotted with U.S. bases and a growing constellation of small American drone outposts. Camp Lemonir, north of Somalia, has been America's main facility on the continent for nearly a decade. It houses about 4,000 military and civilian personnel. But at the end of last year, it was forced to stop flying drones in the area after a string of crashes and growing anger from locals. The problem is U.S. forces are getting stretched very thin. They're being tasked with missions well beyond their numerical and logistics capability right now. And the danger with Africa, like all foreign interventions, uh, is that new conflicts expand from them and all the next thing you know, suddenly you're out of troops and out of money to su sustain these missions. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says... What is happening in Africa is so exciting overall and we are really deeply uh, engaged and, and, and the president uh, has instructed us uh, to really try to... Uh, light our fire under our efforts uh, in throughout the continent. But what's not so exciting is the growth of jihadists and anti-Western groups across the continent. Thousands of American soldiers are gearing up for missions as part of the Pentagon's new strategy to train and advise African militaries to deal with the threat. It's not impressing those who live here. It is American normality. The Americans have failed to combat terrorism in Afghanistan or anywhere else, and the same will happen here in West Africa. It's likely that their presence will even bring the terrorist threat to Senegal. But the president does his calculations saying, well, this will allow me to be a good friend of the United States, maybe attract some investment or strengthen my security forces. But from the point of view of the Senegalese people, we risk losing an awful lot. A number of African leaders have expressed concern about the potential militarization of the continent, fearful that America's expanding presence will bode badly for Africa and her people. Paulus Lear, RT.